Well, everybody, welcome back to the Cut the Camera podcast with the Sterniola Triplets. And Episode number, we don't know because these are getting posted out of order. But, but this is guest number one. Or be number one. Yes, num- guest, guest number one. Guest number one, <laughs> episode Mr. number B. We don't know. Which camera do I look at? This Straight one is ahead. yours. This one is yours. Hi, everyone. But How I are think you? one but of those, those are yours, too. Those like yep. are all of us. All right, well. sweet. But so. Yeah, very special guest. We're excited for you to be here, and we're going to talk. I'm excited to be on here, man. man oh, yeah. Man. I fuck it's with these guys. Genuine, genuine people. Thank you, it's man. time, awesome. bro. I feel like it's been so long. I know. It has been. We've like, been mutuals forever, but not been together since when like 2021 literally and DMing? dude there's been times where like you're like oh i'm coming to la and i'm like i'm in boston and then, yeah. and then you go to like every time you go to florida and we're like oh and you were in hawaii but i stayed honestly i also stayed because i was like i gotta see them so really? i'm gonna stay a little longer yeah oh, i'm really happy cool. about that because we and finished the video yesterday yeah really? i was like we gotta see him yeah that's so cool we met balen today for everybody wondering yeah literally today, earlier today like this is it this is it we're and here we flash. are on the cut the camera podcast so basically this podcast if you don't know is your life when the camera is cut which for you is so easy because you're the same fucking dude regardless so i wrote down a ton of topics and we'll literally just touch on all of them so first off we have like high school like when you were recording videos in high school like what was your off-camera thing that people didn't see while you were like blowing up like did you like for us we had a whiteboard writing down all our ideas we had like like we had inspirations and people we were looking after to like recreate their stuff somewhat you being one of them so like how do you yeah man but so how do you go about that when you're in like high school like first starting because you started in high school as well yeah, right I started in high school uh like what do you mean like what was i like like what were you what was yeah, your i didn't process? even understand that like, question what was your process yeah, I'm a little to lost like on the question. content like did you just like go i'm gonna Bro, go out and break somebody it or just, it was just what me and my friends would do all the time literally like just... before before we were um before we were filming it it's like we would go to massage places and moan we would be in the lunchroom like yelling. We'd be like, we would legit like just go to stores and fuck around. Everything you see on camera was what we were doing when we were 15, 16. And then um, we started seeing people make money off of it. Like we saw Nelk, we saw Danny, we saw these guys and we're like, how the fuck? Like they're millionaires off just doing what we do. And we're like, all right, let's pick up the camera and just fucking be ourselves. So like when you're- but It was a grind in school. Like I remember I would put my editing computer behind my real, my real computer. Cause I knew around junior year, I knew this is what I wanted to do. Like every single person was signing up for college and shit. And I was just like, this isn't me. And that's where I really was like, okay, let's go hard. Let's film this stuff. But I was always so much more into it than my friends. Like they loved it. But like I was the one behind it posting. I was the one, you know what I mean? So um, it started off as a group channel. Really? Yeah. But then I got kicked out of high school and all my friends got suspended, but they deemed me as the leader. So I had to leave. Are those friends like, like Kyle and PJ or different friends? No, no, no. Uh, PJ, yes, PJ. PJ? PJ, but he was barely in the videos because his legs were broken or some shit. Oh, wow. He was on crutches. Both legs? On, no, 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 he was on crutches. <laughs> oh, that's not like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's insane. Insane. <laughs> I don't even think his leg was broken. I think it was like, no, he got surgery. Okay, oh, he got surgery. Surgery. Surgery, surgery will put you out, bro. Yeah, like, so he didn't just... even get suspended. But wow. they still called him in and like interviewed him. That's um, crazy. They treated Did it like you go to like a private school? Yeah, like, it was a private school. Oh, wow. So that's mm-hmm. like for real. They so did you it. like, since like making content in school is like a really weird thing for me, Matt and Chris, because our peak of content was like COVID. Like right when we were making content, like during school, it was like online school. So we didn't really have to like face the battles kind of of like seeing people in real life while making content. Was that like, were you praised by people around you? Yeah, or, like, I was never, whenever of? people DM me, like I get bullied at school for, for making videos. I never got hate. Um, only adults hated on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the kids uplifted it. I truly believe, like, if you own something, you can't get made fun of. Yeah, that is. You know so what true. I mean? It's like, and it's like if you're if someone's making fun of you and it's something you enjoy, then you're like, bro, you look like I'm enjoying it regardless. You gotta have that mindset of like, I'm like, if someone's tearing me down for that, like, they're Literally. a loser. Well, it's, like, yeah, why the it's, fuck do they care? It's all about your own confidence, because it's like if you pre- even if you're not 100 percent confident in something you're doing, if you pretend to be 100 percent confident in something you're doing, everyone will see your like level of confidence 100%. and then believe it. I and it's like, like confidence is the key to everything. I was about to say, speaking of confidence, like so for you, like if I were to be in your position for like the pranks and shit, I would need to muster up like the fucking courage to go in and like I agree. Do shit. See, I feel so that it. Like, just, it's like it's like it's like <laughs> a addiction. Like it's like better than sex to me. Like <laughs> just, messing with someone and like ha- like confrontation and like having to get out of it is like my favorite thing. It's in the just world. an adrenaline. See, it's crazy because yeah, so I'm the polar opposite. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think no, that's no, what I know. Everyone's like, he was like, yeah, we want to come visit you, but. 
Makes you worried about like showing up and like you wanting to fuck around in yeah, Walmart. Yeah, like I'm like if I go there and they're like fuck around in Walmart, I'm like Ubering out of there, and like I'm not. No, gets rough. I'm being so for real. Like I some think people that, just aren't for yeah, it. Yeah, it's genuinely probably my biggest fear. I, one of okay, one of the questions that I wanted to ask is so your content is like it's a lot of like in public shit, fucking around, like messing with people and stuff. When like COVID and that shit all happened, and you're like stuck in the house, how did that like change how you're running your content and whatnot? We just ran to Florida. Because Florida was like... They didn't have shit, like, no nothing, rules, bro. Nothing. And, yeah. well, and I bought the house, because that was, like, the end of the traveling. Because, yeah. like, right before COVID, we were traveling everywhere. And then it was, like, I was in L.A. when it happened. And L.A. was, like, the worst. Like, so we just went to Florida, and then it was, like, obvious, all right, no way we're going to be able to travel. So I bought the house. That's when we bought the house. So then it was a lot... I feel like it was a lot of us fucking around in the house. But then also, it's, like, Florida was not shut down. Yeah. Like, but you go also, to the beach, and it was open. Like, another thing, too, is, like even though everything was shut down technically um like yeah you were quarantined but the grocery stores were like still open like people have yeah. to go out so it's like the things that were like necessities for people to go out is like we're still available and it was just a lot of friendship shit like it was just a lot of like you know we'd throw fucking water on pj when he sleeps or yeah true pj comes and sprays something on us like it, it was like i feel like that's honestly a really strong suit in my vlogs is the group I yeah, agree, yeah. Like the, sure. the friendship in my videos and it's real yeah. It's like, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers that will, like, hire the people for the videos or, like, it's like, they go home after it. Like, these are my best friends. Yeah. You pick up on that on camera. I feel like that's what people really fell in love with. Yeah. yeah. And that's, like, the, that's the same thing for us three because it's like, yeah, we're brothers, but it's like, we're best friends. That's why it works. Exactly. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, like, and it's whenever, genuine. It's genuine. It's so genuine. That's why, like, content houses, like, I'm not talking about content houses now. I'm talking about, like, content houses, like, back in the day, like, Team 10 and shit were so popular. It's because people love the dynamic of just, like, groups I got of YouTubers offered to move and friends. Into the, um, to move into the uh, house with Aiden and I think Summer Rae. I don't know. Banks oh. Banks called me. And like and when like Zia and Bilu were there, Like right? shout out to, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. I know Aiden was there. I think Summer Rae was there. I don't know. All I know is Banks called me. Um, And I love Aiden. And I love Banks. Yeah. But I was just like, I was just like, I want to stick in the house with my with my like yeah. childhood it's what friends, you know. you know? Yeah. And like that takes out a whole part of who you are is like your content that people are get excited to see. Mm-hmm. Like if you were to live on your own and not have like PJ and like Kyle and all your friends in your videos anymore. I would hate to live by myself. I feel like it would like just take like not take away from the channel like because you would still make the content you make. But it would like have like a missing piece to it. Well, because yeah, people always talk about like change and like like fear of like people they're watching changing. But it's kind of like. As long as you're sticking like by the people you're with, like me, Matt, and Chris could be doing anything. You can't change. But I don't feel like I don't feel like anything changes when me, Matt, and Chris are doing shit together. And that's the same way of like when you're doing shit with friends. It's like it can't necessarily change because it might be a change, but you're all still the same people doing the exactly. same shit. Yeah. So it's kind of like I don't know, I'm gonna lean back and yeah, I'm over. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing about the change thing is like they like if you keep people around you like that, you can't you don't change as a person in this in this um life because like they keep me in check. Yeah. I keep them in check. Like we're always on each other. It's such friendship. It's like I have like it's no yes man. It's no like it's it's brothers. Like, yeah, nothing has changed in our friendship since we were. I'm, How- I've known Kyle since I was zero. Really, I've known PJ since freshman year of high school. Wow. How often, like, when you go back to your hometown, do you hear like, oh, you changed or like you're different? Like never, ever? never. No, I'm not gonna lie. Even on the internet, everyone knows I haven't changed. Yeah, like, everyone picks up on it. That's it's so the real. Same, too. It's the same stuff. Of course, things around me have changed. Yeah. Like, I didn't have a fucking house when I was for 17. Real. I didn't have um, people asking for pictures. But, but, like, me, I'm the same kid. For real. And I'm the same. Um, And people often tell me I'll meet up, especially in the beginning, I'll meet up with people, and they're like, all that no party shit. Like, when you make it, you're you're going to party, bro. Like, you're going to want to do drugs yeah. and people, fuck that's, bitches. That's how go people, crazy. like, talk to us. Not- today. It's like, oh, one day you'll try alcohol. One day. It's like, wait, before we do that, I want to ask one question. Me, Matt, and Chris bicker, like, as siblings and constantly arguing, like, joking around when it comes to content. And, like, we're in arguments for, like, that don't last more than, like, an hour because we're joking. Do you and, like, your friends ever prank each other to the point where you genuinely are mad for, like, an hour? Like, you're, like, that crossed the line completely? Um, yeah, every now and then. Like, it's just, like, every now and then. Just because, I mean, me and Kyle are a lot. Like, when me and Kyle link up, like, whoever, if you're asleep in the house, like, me and Kyle are fucking and so obnoxious like people fear me and Kyle <laughs> together so funny so sometimes people be like all right bro chill the fuck out has even like with like strangers has there been like a point where you have crossed the line too far where like you didn't want to post a video or like a stranger like acted too crazy that you didn't even want it like the reaction in or like 
has there ever been a point where something blew something so far out of proportion it was just like unpostable um not really like for the most part i mean sometimes i'm trying to think of an example i don't know for the most i always know i'm very good at knowing when it's too much um and when it's when it's too far and i feel like i have a super good balance like i feel like dude so many people are like i don't know i just i just have always known um that's how i feel like there's definitely are. a time though probably before yeah. where i'm just like yeah i don't really like, like that but because i think of shit like this all the time where it's like i enjoy your content i think that your content's great before like getting to a point like you never get to a point where you cross your lines like as a viewer from a viewer standpoint because you. i've seen your videos because i because if i'm being totally honest like one of my biggest pet peeves in the whole world is people that go out and like just wreak havoc but your content is like it's never to a point where someone genuinely needs to be as upset as they get. And I think that's kind of why it's so funny. There's a 100% way to do it. There's a respectful way to do it. Like, you guys are never, like, breaking shit. Like, you're never, like, just completely, like, being disrespectful to yeah, a person. And it's, like, it's I like always constantly see... actually funny. And no one yes. should actually get as mad as they do. I always see, like, when you make a mess in a store, you clean it up. Like, you're very, like, like if you make a mess, break something that's never intentional, you always clean up after yourself. It's, like, a respectful way of like making the content doing things there's a hundred percent a way to do it and i always try to like just make me kind of look like a dumbass yeah like you know like if you watch it like it rarely like are we going after how people look you know what i mean yeah. like we'll make stupid jokes like we call old people count dooku but like that's friendly <laughs> count dooku's like this old dude in star wars they said they didn't watch star wars fuck fuck you guys <laughs> um but like like i always try to just kind of be this like like idiot when yeah. I'm pranking. When I'm pranking, I play like this idiot character, and then vlogs. I'm just being myself, and I'm naturally just a yep. nice guy. So like, when someone's nice, we're so nice. But then if someone's yes. like being such a pussy, <laughs> then we'll mess with them a little more. You know what I mean? I think the best thing is when someone can just accept that they got pranked, and like they're just gonna move past it, and they're like, it's kind of like accepting and moving on, and, like just living in that defeat. Yeah. And it's cool as fuck if you can handle <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, super agree. cool. When 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 people are cool, they're so cool. Literally, it's but it's so awesome. funny because people are so fucking stupid. Like it's like I'll be walking in. And and filming like say I'm we're not even like messing around like say I'm like filming me buying something at Target to do a prank and someone will come up and like start fucking raging on me like telling me stop filming stop filming I'm like bro you wouldn't even be in the fucking shot if you didn't walk up no like, they're that's like, like get me off this fucking camera and I'm <laughs> that, like bro that you always came into blows the my mind is like why people get so worried of you filming in their like facilities it makes it seem like they're like hiding something that's like, what I'm saying like, what's man. this big that's Target secret that can't be <laughs> recorded. I, that's what I'm saying. It's really bizarre. All but right, let's go to. But the... I do. I really like to push to the kids of like the way to do it because there's oh, such yeah. a way to prank. Yeah, like, yeah. There's such a way well, where it's, it's like, like if you friendly. were in there and like broke a bunch of glass plates and you were like throwing shards of glass at people, I'd like, no, like this is insane. Sometimes I go on my for you page and kids are like just fucking people up and doing shit, and I'm like, no, that's why I want to put out there like, like there's there's such a balance. All right, let's go to the next one. Ready? Sobriety. We all know you're sober. We talked about it briefly a minute ago. Same with us three. Literally never tried alcohol for all three of us or anything. So, yeah, that I feel like I was just talking about it before, but like this whole next generation of YouTubers, I feel like you and all your friends, me, Matt and Nick, and like a lot of other people are promoting being sober. So everyone, like, like everyone in my lane, is it's like, becoming more normal than like the the other like genre of it, like the dark side of like yeah. the alcohol. <laughs> dark side. Not like the dark side. No, I know what you like, mean, because it was just really like normalized and not even normalized, but like. It's um, normalized that, like, word? famous people are, like, drinking and partying yeah. like, you and were all cool this stuff. If you well, were I just think that. it's really weird when, like, adults talk to children. Like, oh, when you're, like, older, you'll understand. Like, you're going to be, like, partying and doing this. It's like, yeah. you're just, like, like it's kind of setting them up. It is. It is. It's, it's definitely flipping, though. Yeah. Like, I'll, it's so funny because, it's like, back in the day, it's, like, kids would, like, fake be drunk or something. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, cool. yeah. Now, like, when I meet people, like... I'll meet people that I know aren't sober, and they'll be like, nah, Balin, I'm sober. Like, I'm fucking... Because they like... It's, like, yeah, cool now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know literally. what I mean? It, and, like, half the people doing this, these pranks are sober. It's, like, such a trend, which is super awesome, because it's just, like, kids look so heavily to famous people, you know? Like, they idolize them. So, like, I want to use it for good and just um preach what I would want as a kid you know when there's people you look up to that's like drinking and stuff or like like famous people it's easier to just be like oh i want to be like them and they drink and like a lot to of make it like it's okay yeah and it's like a lot of like rappers and artists smoke and drink and people are like oh if i want to rap or something or if i want to do this i have to do this like that 
but it's showing like an avenue that you can do whatever you want regardless of like whatever decision you well, make. Well, like I kind of like think of like there's no real like set in stone rule or way to, or like a normal way to do anything. Like it was when you think of like like no matter what, there's a lane for everything. And what I mean is like when people are like, oh, I need to like not be sober to like, oh, if I want to be like a rapper. But it's like you can create your own lane for any sort of like yeah. way of life at all. And that's just this kind of like you can. Yeah. Like, like, if you own something and you're confident, you can make it cool. Like, even in high school, I was uplifted for being sober when I was, like, the only sober kid in my high school. But everyone uplifted it because I just owned it, and I was, like, vocal about it. Like, I wasn't embarrassed. The second you make something embarrassing, it's like, if you own anything, you can make it cool. Like, even in 2019, I had acne, and, like, I was, I remember saying shit like, damn, I rock acne. Like, I look good. And then, like, it didn't stop me. I blew up off acne. You know, a lot of kids would be like, oh, I don't want to get on camera. I don't want to. You can't let shit, if you just own shit, it's like, you're your biggest, you're the, your biggest critique. Like, you're the big, you're the biggest one. Like, wait, are people not going to like me because I'm not drinking? Are people not going to like me because I got acne on my face? Like, you know what I mean? No, I'm a constant way of, like, thinking, like, if I looked like that on camera or, like, in a photo or whatever, I let someone post it because it's, like, as unfortunate as I may think it is, like, wow, I look horrible. It happened. It was a moment in time, and it, it's going to move past. You can't keep like, up if you're yeah, constantly it's like, it's, trying it's to, like, make everything perfect. Sometimes I'm like, damn, I, that's unfortunate, but oh well like we're moving I past looked like it, that you know? and there's a sense of realness to it yeah but oh my god what was i gonna say oh talking about like when you were like getting praised for being sober in school like people were like completely like oh that's cool me Matt, and chris was like an opposite effect sometimes because that's why it's so interesting to me of like we would tell people we're sober and it's not like they would actually be like oh negative toward it like oh you need to not be sober it was kind of just like lack of like oh that's cool but like when I drank, like, we weren't included. It was more in, like, like people thinking that, like, we couldn't, because we were sober ourselves, people could not handle being around us if we were sober. Like, we were just saying we were sober as, like, a fact. Like, oh, we're not going to drink with you, but, like, if you're drinking and we're there, like, go for it. Like, that's your thing. But they'd be, like, scared to be around us because, like, we're sober and they think that we're going to, like, be mad about it. Peer, peer pressure and that shit is, like, the most lame thing you can do. I like, think peer oh, pressure is, like, the goofiest shit on this earth like yeah it's like, how are like, you like if you're gonna really do like if you have to pe like pressure someone else into it i just don't even get the point it's like you're, you're just making, lame yeah. you're just lame if you're bringing p like people into like bad habits that you have just because you already have them like have them on your own that's why i flipped i was telling you this earlier that's why i flipped it and that's why i'm so aggressive like i got this bracelet that i sell on my website and it's stay sober don't be a pussy and, like it's like aggressive but i do it because like the kids getting peer pressure are being told like you're a pussy if you don't drink and so, like, no, you're a pussy. Like, you know what I mean? You're a pussy if you give in and listen to what other people if are you just telling flip you. Like, the just other do you. And I have nothing against people that smoke or drink. Like, if you got your life put together, blah, blah, blah. Like, a lot of my friends do. Not, not like, my friends on that your are on camera every day, but, like, my old high school friends. Like, Same year. Nothing literally. nothing against it. But, like, when I'm, when I'm speaking that aggressive, I'm speaking for those kids that are in middle school, in high school, and they don't want to do it. 100%. You know? Because it's, like. Don't listen to what anyone else says. 100%. Don't be supposed to like. Don't go. Don't go follow him. Be a leader. Like don't. For do sure. It. You know. Yep. All right. Next up, we have um Lil Yachty. When you met Yachty, you obviously looked up to Yachty so much, and he was your Goat. favorite artist, right? Goat. So, what was like the process of that? Like, do you remember first getting hit up? Well, bro, like... I met him the first time I met him. I was a fan, a in a junior in high school at his show. At his show. Wow. Um, I was like planning it. Like I, I was like telling everyone I'm going to get on stage, I'm going to get on stage. And um, because he he was sober at the time when I was in high school and he was pushing a lot of positivity, a lot, a lot of the stuff you see me push, like it really is from both. Um, because I love, he was always talking about like, never switch up when you get to the fame, never fucking, you know, never change, stay positive, follow your dreams. And like, that shit's real. You know what I mean? Like it really affected me as a kid because I'm seeing this dude go from, he was young too. He was like 19, he was 19 when I was really into him. Um, and I was like to see this kid go from a normal kid to them being famous and then pushing like good stuff on the kids and, and being sober. Um, it affected me so much, you know, that was one of my main reasons of being like, damn, I can be sober. Like if he can do it, I can do it. And so, um, I went to the concert and I wanted to get on stage and tell him how much he's done for me. So I got on stage as a fan, let him know. Did, did you like super make awesome. content and p express how much big no. of a fan you were oh, then? I, I, uh, no, not really. I remember I did like a project on him for language arts or whatever the fuck it was called. I forgot. 
Language arts is like middle school shit. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever the fucking where you write shit. Yeah. Um, and I posted that on YouTube, but it was like on my school account. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really doing videos yet. I don't think I was doing videos at all. So wait, how'd you get on to the stage? Like you dude, I had beads in my hair. I oh, had yachty like beads the yachty in my hair. hair? That's and I was so like hard. fucking was it so red or no? I had red beads, yeah. Uh. <laughs> and um and I was like on my friend's shoulder. He was like, I need someone to come up here and sing this song with me. And I knew he was gonna do that because I was watching all the tour videos on yeah. YouTube. And so I had a plan, bro. I had it mapped out. And I got on stage and I fucking gave, like, I, I sang the song with him and I was like, yo, can I give a speech? And I was like, told him everything he's done for the youth to the crowd. And like, I was so comfortable on stage. It was the first time, like, I pictured something and it came to life. Like, I knew I was going to go on stage. I knew I was going to say that thing. And then, like, seeing him in the flesh and like, fucking, then I get off and everyone was asking me for pictures. Like, it was my first, like, time of feeling like, like, th- this is the life you want. You know, and it wasn't even about me. It was about Bo. Like, it just meant so much to being able to, like, voice what he's done for me. And then um, that was that. And then, like. Did he, like, when you met him after that, did he, like, remember you at yeah. the show? So, oh, that's dude, so I've weird. never told this story, actually. So, he, um, his mom made this book about how to, it's called How to Raise a Rapper. And it's, like, talking about how to raise a kid that wants to be famous and like what you have to do like LLCs and my mom lawyers. should read it also. no it's real it's, Mary real. it's not just for this. like people that want to be rappers yeah, that's so it's like sick. everything it'll talk about the process and like the pros and cons of it and everything um so his mom was having a meet and greet for that book and I had like 500k on YouTube by now and like God is my biggest inspiration 100% credit to him like he showed me I could do this shit and so I told my parents like go to the book meetup you're definitely gonna be able to talk to his parents and just tell them the story briefly I was like, cause I, I don't even think I was in Atlanta. I don't know where I was. Um, but they went and they told him, they told his mom and then she was like, hold on, let me go get miles. So they went and got Yachty. Yachty was leaving. Wow. They went and got Yachty and my parents spoke to Yachty for like 10 minutes and told him the whole thing and Damn. told him like, he made this happen. Cause that's you, insane. He pushed his sobriety cause you used to push it back in the day. It was so wild. I remember my parents texted me a picture of them with Yachty that <laughs> night. How jealous were you? Like, no, I was like, <laughs> oh my, I fucking knew it though. It's another thing. Like it's all. For real, as corny as it is, all of it was destiny. Like, I've pinned yep. things in my life and known. Everything that's happened in my life, I envisioned when I was 17 years old and knew it would yep. happen. And even that, I'm like, I know they're going to be able to talk to his parents. I know it's going to segue into this. So, boom, Yachty knew. I knew Yachty was aware of me. Didn't say. We didn't talk or anything. Like, um, obviously, he's famous as fuck. Like, yeah. So he handed out his number. Um, but then he would go live on his second account during COVID. Mm-hmm. He was just bored. And I was in the live. And his second account, it was like 200 people were in the live. And people were commenting, like, Balin, Balin, Balin. He's like, Balin, I know that name. I talked to your parents. No and way. people were like, watch this video on YouTube be made about you. Because after I met him from that concert when I was mm-hmm. 16, I made a video about it. So then he um, watched the video on live. And I'm like this, I'm, I'm like this, I think I was 18, 19 at the time. And I'm watching him, like, watch my video on live. It's like a 10-minute video. It's still on my YouTube. It's called uh, Meeting Liliati. And I talk about how much he's done for me. And, and everything in that video I predict, I'm like, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'm going to, like push sobriety i'm gonna be like amazing to my fans and everything because he was also also that was super awesome to me is he was so nice to me when i got on stage like he didn't have to let me give that speech he took a picture with me like when he had a whole show to do he took it in front of the the whole crowd so it just like that really stuck with me you know um so a lot of the the way i move now is from that experience because if he was a dick to me dude who knows if i would have gone after youtube you know and that shows like like you have a tour upcoming that you just announced and you've done a show how many fans are you going to like have like on your stage that That's are in I the mean. same position That's you are? That's what I mean. And those kids are going to go get famous one but day. But it's literally, you know? and it's not even like getting on the stage because also like, yes, that was it for you. But imagine like there's a kid that was probably there at the same time you got on stage and that just like was able to see that happen. Yeah. And like they look up to Bo mm-hmm. and you. It's like, or not you at the time, but they look up to him and then they're like, oh my God, look at what he's doing for this kid. Yeah. And that alone, yeah. like they're not even directly. Everyone, in that everyone moment, gets but it's motivated like the experience. in that. In, in yeah, that for, for, real. for sure. Everyone for real. in the crowd, everyone it watching, crazy. seeing all that. It was crazy. So after the, after he watched the video, he DM'd me. He's like, yo, he followed me. I was like, fuck. Like, wow. That's like locked in. Like the I know, follow it's, on it's Instagram wild. It's like, wild. Damn. And then we met up. And uh, the first time we met up as like friends, we uh, worked out in this YouTube video. Oh, I saw that one. I watched yeah. that video. Yeah, yeah. It was really fucking cool. And it was also so cool for the fans to see it too because I would talk yeah. about him in the videos coming up. I'm like, one day I'm going to meet him, one day I'm going to meet him, and then that video drop, and I'm like, damn. That's me if I meet Skies, bro. Yeah, gonna Skies happen. is awesome. Skies I, is I would love go. to meet him, too. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that whole rap wave. Like, it's so cool. 2016, so cool. 2018. Um, but yeah, shout out to Yadi. He's a good dude, too. Yeah. He's like my big brother. That's awesome. You know, he's, That's so he's awesome. A good, he's a good dude to look up to, because mm, a lot of people in this industry aren't. 
yeah. coolest, but he's a real, real that is like an insane story. That's awesome. awesome. It's that like could a be a movie. movie. Yeah. It is a movie. It is, it is bro. And he and uh, I forgot to mention when he did me my parents. He's like the kid with the like he knew the kid with the wow. beads. It all came together, you know. Yep. It was really awesome. That, that is so, so sick. cool. That's it was so awesome. sick. That's like like just the odds of that, and it's kind of just like going back into like just knowing what you want and have and like are gonna have going for yourself. You like if you know. the first person who has to believe in you and like if you want to do anything is yourself. Yeah, you got to. Because the same the whole time you were telling that story and like talking about like just knowing that shit was gonna happen for you was kind of like like i felt the exact same way like watching fucking jake paul in like seventh grade i was like yeah. or like when vine was on its come up and seeing like fucking like sean mendez and nash greer like viners so i was those like early yeah, yeah. Bro, like we'll like Literally, i knew me school, and chris would make we content. were like uh, we don't want to go to college or anything let's just do youtube and we said it as if it was like an easy thing to complete yeah and we just did it like it, it was like, oh, always like, let's do youtube in my mind it was just the way of life like Dude, not same, once, not once did year, I ever bro. doubt myself. I knew I would make I it. I think that's like literally the key to success on the internet is no doubt in yourself. Because that's the you same have shit. It, we had no backup plan. Us yeah, that's well, never had a backup if plan you either. have doubt in yourself, you're opening up the door for other people to doubt you. And then mm -hmm. that's when you also let their opinion like affect you as well. Like a lot of the times when people are like, like would be like, how do you deal with hate comments? How do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? It's like I honestly don't deal with it because I'm so secure in myself and what I'm doing. You have that to it's be like secure. I'm just not gonna deal with it because I believe in myself. Our, our school did like a, it was like a, when you graduate, it was like senior spotlight thing, and it would post all the kids that were graduating, and then like in a circle next to it, it would post like what college they're planning on going to. Yeah, and none. then it's like the we next one is like. We, like, that's ours, ours was like the YouTube logo, and then like everyone in our grade is like, "This that's is embarrassing." So like, why the yeah. fuck are they doing that? And then it's like, because when we have that shit, where we were at like six thousand subscribers, and they're like, "Bro, they're really gonna go off of this off six thousand subscribers?" And then yeah, you know what's crazy? The first thousand is hardest to get to. Yeah, and Dude, then the first like hundred k was the worst. So we, but then it's awesome. Well, the like, hardest, the worst is crazy. Well, the worst. Oh yeah, you know, know what I mean. whatever. But bro. so yeah. we, we graduated to the twenty five k, and then. We said to our mom, we were like, YouTube is what we want to do. Like, this is like what, like our, like, this is what we feel this is what we want. And then she said, if you don't have like a hundred K subscribers by the end of like this gap year, you guys all have to go to college. And we were like, okay, we'll do it. It wasn't then, like a have to go to college because our like, parents were never like that. It was like, you have to think of like, yeah, you have other to think things. of like a backup plan. And then after that year that we were supposed to be at a hundred K, we were hitting a million. So it was like fucking yeah, it goes. insane did, did you have that talk with your parents about like i'm gonna do it like I'm hell gonna yeah do dude I, I they were not for it in the beginning mm -hmm. um because they just didn't understand yeah they didn't understand it was a viable pathway you know mm -hmm. they wanted me like they they wanted me so bad that's why they put me off into a private school you know it wasn't yeah. easy but they wanted so badly to for me to be successful yeah and a lot of parents just view that as the school as the only way to be successful you know but um I knew even getting when I got kicked out of school, they called they kicked me out the summer in a senior year. So they called me in wow. the summer. I thought I got in trouble for like cheating on my final or something. <laughs> but I got in there. The summer of senior year? The summer into senior oh, year. Oh, I was about to say, like, why didn't they just And it was let a fucked situation because the, the vice principal knew about the channel mm -hmm. and he like talked to me and he was like, Yo, as long as you don't wear the logo or you film at school property, go for it. That's and then he turned crazy. around and fucked me in the ass. And I and I and so I did what he told did you me to do. Finish like high school in a different school and just get your yeah, diploma. Yeah, yeah, but what I was saying is I walked out that day I got kicked out and like my mom was crying everyone and she was like you're deleting that channel like wow damn you no know? because dude they just I just got yeah, yeah kicked out of the it's school. also like when money comes in like I feel like our mom and dad had no idea like how you get paid as a YouTuber what oh they had no fucking so like clue. when you started making your first like big check like fat check like. Did you like show your parents and yeah, be like, no, well, we're, we're, we're jumping. We're jumping. Yeah, you did jump. I was like, I jumped? jumped? When, I yes. got, when I got kicked out, well, I got to answer your first question when I had the talk with my parents. When oh, I yeah, got kicked right. out, I told them, like, this is destiny. I promise you, me getting kicked out, now I'm going to hone in. Like, now it's like this or nothing, you know? Because it got to that point, especially that wasn't. That wasn't the, the breaking point of like, damn, you're going to be a no one if you don't do it. What was really the breaking point is I went to this, now to answer the other question about the schools, I went to this, my local school. Um, and I walked around and like, I've always been like, I've always been like a prominent figure in school. You know, like people always thought I was funny and then we had this funny friend group and I showed up at that school senior year. My girlfriend went to the other, my girlfriend went to my old school. My whole friend group went to like different schools. Like we were all separated. I was in the school by myself walking around. No one knew me. Everyone was like, damn, who is this kid? Like he just came here at senior year. I ate lunch, like no friends. Like I was just no one like I, I i had this vivid picture of me like one day i'm gonna walk through the school and everyone's gonna know who i am you know and and i remember i told my girlfriend come pick me up i'm done like this sounds like i'm fucking making it up i texted her and i was like i'm leaving school 
And so I, I walked out of school early. Like I just walked out the front door, went in her car and I went home and I was like, mom, I'm doing online. Like I will finish high school for you. I'll do online, but I'm focusing on YouTube. Like I'm going all in on YouTube. And she was like, no, you're not blah, blah. I'm not setting that up for you. I'm like, okay, I will. So I went to the guidance counselor, told her I'm doing YouTube. I, I'll do online. And I just got kids to do my homework. People helped me out and did my homework and took my tests. I cheated so hard. I cheated so hard. And I don't promote that to the kids that actually want to do good at school, but I knew I didn't have time for that shit. I was like, I'm doing, I'm going in on YouTube. I only wanted to get my high school diploma for my mother. Yeah. That's what I want to do. That's the only reason why I showed up to our graduation it. in person. She if, wanted if it. I, I didn't even get to do that. Bro, <laughs> Dude, I had, wanted to get, I wanted we to have all the, wanted our diplomas mailed, mailed to, to the, the house. house. And then my like, mom was yeah. like, I put you guys in this school. You're walking across that stage. I was yeah. like, okay, fine. But it's also like, that's you have to think of like mom perspectives. Like our moms are so similar just off of like what I'm listening to what you said. But then, but then. They were on board way before, way before they saw a lot of money because I started ex- I started explaining it more to them. You know, I started giving yeah. them examples of people that have made it. Yeah. And I started giving them examples because my mom was always like, don't you want to do something with your life like that impacts people like a doctor, you're saving lives or like this. And I'm like, mom, you do these pranks, you get kids that think you're funny, but then you have like you have a voice. Yeah. And I was like, I am saving lives by promoting sobriety. And by promoting, you know how many alcoholics that will that will like for stop. Sure. You know, it all starts for somewhere. Sure. Like kids drink like for fun, about but to create. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like and... kids will drink for fun, and then it becomes something down the future. Like for sure, there's so many kids that won't even touch it because of me. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm impacting millions of lives now. And that's what I always push is I never want to push like everyone fucking be a YouTuber, everyone be a rapper. Like if that's what you want to do in life, do it. But if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be fucking anything, there needs to be something of everything. You know, like I, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying fuck school. If you if that's what you want to do. 100% go be the best at it. But it's just you, you know have what, other you things knew less people, for you. Like you knew it. I knew you had I to do. knew it was like destiny to be a YouTuber. I knew it. I knew that's what I wanted because it was everything I've ever wanted. You get the influence, you get to make people laugh. For my happiness too, I've always loved making videos and editing them. I've always loved even like clothing brand. Like I would try to start a little clothing brand in high school like with being a YouTuber, then you can do clothing yep. brands. Like my merch is is in retail stores now. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you can do so much once you have eyes on you. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as my parents recognized that I was helping kids, like even when I got like 10K on Instagram, they started to yeah, be like, wow. That's awesome. Um, and 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 right away, I was always so business minded. Like right away, I did merch. Not because it was about money, but because I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah. So, because, bro, it can go either way. It's like there's YouTubers out here with millions of subscribers, but not millions of dollars. You know what I mean? So I made sure to always... Always. You build a brand about who you are. You preach what you have to like. So what I can you do it forever and take care of my people. I want to bring sure. my friends with me. You know, Pete Absolutely. and Kyle are doing their thing. Like my Absolutely. parents, my parents um, own the merch company now. Like my dad doesn't work a regular job. Like I, um, I was always business minded in a sense of like I want to do this and I want to help my people. That's beautiful, bro. So as soon as they really saw the movement, it wasn't just like I'm making prank videos. Like as soon as they yeah. understood it and they took time to understand it, they were with the yeah. show. Well, it's so crazy to try and like understand it because like I always think back. Like, what's so mind-blowing to me and, like, parents, like, even our parents, and they were like, what is social media? Like, how are you even going to make a job off that? Like, my mom and dad still, no hate to people who have Androids, but they, they still have Android phones. They ha- My dad had a flip phone up until, like, three years ago. My mom has an iPad, barely knows how to use it. And then I think back when I was, like, a kid and I was, like, in Cape Cod with, like, we had this one friend from, like, preschool that we were hanging out with for the first time. And they came to our Cape house, and her dad was the first person I had ever seen with an iPhone. And it was like an iPhone 4. And I remember that. So it's like the fact that like smartphones and iPhones didn't really exist at the beginning of our life just goes to show like even the oldest person you know doing social media is relatively new at it. Like it's a it's new real. job. That is and that's so why true. It's so difficult to promote and be like, oh, I'm going to do social media. Like I want my job to be like the internet because like, it's there's like, been doctors dude, since the fucking. Yeah, there's been like, doctors the since the dawn of time, shit. bro. Like <laughs> cavemen doctors healing each other. You know what I mean? But it's like <laughs> yeah. an iPhone is no, so, new. so yeah. recently like, to this made. Day, my, like to this day, um, not there's like this, this, I have so many grandparents, but one set of grandparents like still don't understand it that much. And it's like, I don't know how much more. I'm on tour. My dad doesn't have to work. Like, I don't know what like, more. But on. it's still just like they can't fathom that they had to go to school for, for sure. so long. For sure. Well, it's because they, it's like, like it, it starts with not young. even knowing how to use a phone. Like, they don't know how to use a phone, so they can't imagine that you can use it to the level of which you now have a job. Literally, this right here. It's all you need, man. Make yeah. you successful as shit. And, That's all you need. Also, I remember like starting YouTube and we were talking about like, oh, like we don't have like the right supplies. Like we don't have a you light. Don't have a camera. You, you literally nothing. just need like 
a free editing software. iMovie is free on an Apple thing. Like you can go to like school and use someone's editing software, yeah. go there early, and then like a phone to record. And, and I genuinely believe, like like we were talking about, is it is who you are. Like if you are funny or you're good at fucking cooking and you want to do a cooking channel, you're good at. I genuinely believe if you are good at it and you know you're good at it and you keep going, eventually you'll be big. And, like you know that's I mean? another thing that I think of is like. Like, there's so many people on this earth that, like, you can like the rarest thing, but if you do what you like, you're not the only person that likes it. If I like fucking banana mayo sandwiches, I could post it and then start an army of all the other people you that could. do. And the more you put like, out of, like, I just, I did not hide a thing about myself. I was just mm -hmm. like, I want to be me because I wanted to never hate it. Like, if you put out who you are, then you're never having to fulfill an image or, like, you know, you, you enjoy it. So, like, I brought in these group of kids that are sober and love Star Wars and listen to Lil Yachty. You know what I mean? It's like an amazing it's awesome because you you put out what you put out is what you get so these people that like fake a persona or like do something they don't want to do put it out there and then they're known for it and then they get trapped you know yep. i'm known for being me yeah yep. and that's what's crazy is like i always like get like because we obviously in the social media space like know of people that are just not themselves like on camera it's crazy and it's like it, it blows my mind because i think of like with the amount of content we put out i could not even fathom for one video not being myself because it's like i don't get how you can build that persona to like not be yourself because it makes no sense to me like your whole job wow. is being and it's like it must be so difficult because like, like i remember thinking of how much us three film and how much you probably film like you probably film every day and it's like imagine having to pretend to be someone you're not crazy. it's all like, the bro, time that and then i crazy. saw like i saw one interview and i totally what forget i said it's like every time the camera's on you're just like you're technically an actor yeah, yeah. at that well, point i literally. saw one fucking interview and i don't know which disney kid it was whether it was like selena gomez or like miley cyrus or something but they were talking about like the first time they said like fuck on like a public level or like and see like, and it's like oh my god that like that's like, crazy is that not crazy I that like disney that kids too because my parents were like once i got kicked out they're like no more cussing yeah. And like I had to listen to them for a second. I would just I had to listen to them for a second. I just had to like like bleep out the cuss words. Uh-huh. But we like, did the same thing. Our mom does the exact same thing. thing. No, but I told them like if I can't cuss and then the day I make it and like you guys like can't tell me what to do and I wanna cuss, it's gonna be such a shock to the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to put out how I talk, how I act from day Bro, one because then it's like sure. I can say fuck, fuck, shit, shit. Like everyone's <laughs> Everyone, that's how bad talks. No one cares. If you put out who you are, then they can't get mad at you for being yourself, Bro, you know? When we first started swearing around our parents, I legitimately showed my mom a clip of one of your videos to show her that, like, it was the clip where I'm pretty sure you're in, like, a food court, and you literally go, literally anything can be a swear. Like, if someone said yes. apple is a swear, yes. you could say, like, don't say the A word, and it's, yes. like, just apple. It's like, so fucking I literally stupid showed that. I showed that to my mom, and I was like, can you just watch this real quick? Like, Cause she would get so mad about. Uh, it's real. Like, imagine swearing. if someone said, "What's this game called?" Sorry, sorry is a cuss word. No one would be saying sorry, but then fuck is sorry. Let's play fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking fun. Stupid and to it's me. also like I just and like, cussing doesn't make you a bad per. It, I I'm not gonna lie. When people cuss, I'm like, oh, you're real. No, yeah, you know what I mean, it, it creates like a. It's sense also of just like, the tone. Like if I was like Balin, you're fucking awesome. Like you're like, oh, that's that means that's I'm an so much more awesome than if yeah. I was just like Balin, you're awesome. Exactly, Balin, you're fucking awesome. Exactly. And I just think of like with swearing, it's kind of just like. Like, me, my, and it's Chris, emphasis. with not swearing, sure, we'd have, like, like, we could be, I've seen so many things, like, oh, please don't swear in your videos, like, you guys should so stop bigger. swearing, you yeah. could be so much bigger, like, I would rather take the position I'm in than have, like, 10 million subscribers 100%. and not be swearing, because it's also, like, you are, you're setting, yourself. it's the same way as setting yourself up for not being yourself, and then it's, like, it's gonna come to a shock, or, like, people who support you are not gonna support you anymore, and it's, like, I don't want people who are so afraid of, like, words, like, fuck and bitch, to come out of my mouth. I don't want those people 100%. that are so scared of that 100%. to be consuming my content because that's just not. And it's like yeah. everyone's going to swear at some point in their life. It's like, it's like. And even well, if you don't, don't yeah. watch the video. <laughs> yeah. That's but no, it's like, I don't. 100%. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get how All it's right, like. Let's do a new topic. Go for it. So we're going to talk about like, you just recently posted you have a girlfriend now, right? I did. And um, basically with me and all of our girl fan base, I'd be terrified to do that. So did you like, is there anything that you keep private on the internet that you want to like keep safe? Or did you just say like, fuck it, I don't care. Like anyone can know or. Um, damn near no, everything's out there. Yeah. You know, everything's out there. I just wanted to do it the right way with her because um, she's so important to me. And also because it was private in my life. Um, just because we were so like, she was in school, she was never really in the videos. It just never lined up. It's not like I was hiding it. It was just like, she was my high school girlfriend too. She was still going in the school I got kicked out of when I started YouTube. So she wasn't allowed to be in the videos because if anyone was caught wow. with me in the videos, they get kicked That's out insane. of the school. Wow. You know? 
So she wasn't there for that. She was by my side. And then college hit and like her coach, she went to school for running. Mm-hmm. Um, Her coach was like, who's that YouTube kid you hang out with? Like throwing dildos on the internet, you know? So it was so much pressure. <laughs> yeah. And it created so much stress between us because I'm like supposed to be the worst kid ever like fucking around all the time and she has to be squeaky clean because she's she about like, to like graduate from um, college yeah, she's about to graduate that's so cool yeah, yeah um and like i think it's like her last two days right now oh wow um yeah so like in well, between to her bro, well. so we 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 broke up and then like it came back immediately you know what i mean but we never like we never were like Acting together all the it. time because i was traveling and yeah. she was in school so we would talk and talk and then like eventually i was just like fuck this if this is the girl i love I can make this work, you know? Yeah, because that's, like, huge with, like, YouTubers and stuff, like, keeping, like, love life. Because, like, if you're going to post someone you're, like, genuinely in love with, you want to make sure it's the right person. Because, like, I see relationships that are a month long on the internet, and I see those people, and I'm like, bro, why would you... And then it, like, it, why it, would it you puts such, like, that? a... It, it puts such an unrealistic standard that there's going to be, like, fights in a relationship and, like, yeah. arguments and this and that. And, like, there's mm. still real relationship stuff going on. But for, for what people show on the internet like of relationships and stuff they're always like perfect no arguments this and that but like people don't understand that there is room for like it's Break real ups. life it's like, yeah. like it's still like yeah so it's like it is a scary thing to do because everybody's like obviously everybody wants to see you win everybody wants to see yeah exactly you know but that's why you just got to be yourself on the internet you know it's like and also have a sense of like i only put out like you can't catch me when have you seen me beefing with someone online? Or no, like for sure. Drama or like, like, like say bro. me and P's got in a fight or something like that shit would never be on the internet because I just know that like, I don't like putting negative shit out there. I resolve that shit with whoever I'm talking to and we, we figure it out. You know what I mean? It doesn't. Yeah. Not, well, not only that, but I feel like it opens the door for like, like the second something hits social media, it opens the door for people to weigh an opinion. And sometimes yeah. it's like, you don't even have your opinion set straight or like, you don't even know what's happening. Like, you could be in an argument with someone, and like, if you post that, if someone posts that, and they're like, oh, these two are beefing, like, online, it's like, they, you're s- literally stunting them from possibly being able to sort it out, because you're feeding people things that don't, like, that lo- like aren't mm. actually happening, because people, like, will make up something, like, in addition to it. So that's why, I, like, I never believe in, like, sorting like, shit if, out like, online. If there's, like, a video online, it's like, so-and-so has been caught cheating with it's like, bro, that could be the first time that couple's yeah. hearing about and that, it. That's yeah. why I'm so happy. Internet. It's like, I, I like, hate, like, scary. drama-based shit, and that's why I'm happy, like... I've never made my shit about drama. Yeah. I refuse to partake. It's all positivity over here. Yeah, it's and that's why love. I love our, like, be- making a podcast of our own is because it's, like, it opens the door to talk about shit in, like, a healthy way, but never, like, feeding off of, like, the most dramatic standpoint of that person's life. 100%. You know? It's 100%. like, I don't know. Because, yeah, it would get views, but it's, like... I wouldn't and, and force but myself to do that. Like, it's like people got to realize that that shit is momentary. Dude. Yeah. Like mm. if they wa- are, if they're watching you for drama, yeah. they don't actually give a fuck about you. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like my fans, I can make a video of me and the boys at the laundromat. I mean, I have doing laundry and it'll get millions of views because they just, they're in love with you. They're not, oh, what is he going to do crazy? Exactly. What is he going to, what beef? You know what I mean? Because all the people that blow up off that shit are gone like that. You know what I mean? But when you build it around who you are, you last forever. Yeah. You know? So I have another question for uh, about Mr. Khan. Okay. Hit me. So does is like if people don't know who is Mr. Khan, like explain Mr. Khan him in like is, a minute. He worked across from my high school. Mm-hmm. He was the gas station guy across. <laughs> and we would just go in there and he was so fun. And like, you know, usually adults are getting mad at us, but he like thought we were so funny. So like when we started filming, of course. You yeah, know, we filmed what what was around us. We didn't even know Mr. Kong was gonna be this big thing. Yeah, it was just like we and would so go there like every a, day after school. So we brought the camera one day, and he's a staple of your like legit brand now. Like everyone who knows oh, you knows how funny him. it's it sad is. because he won't take any money. Yeah, he won't like he won't. No, he literally never wants to leave that is shop. Is he like, aware of like how popular you are? You think? Yeah, I mean, kids every single day, kids are yeah. going there. Um, every fucking day. He's like, there's not a, been a day since. Yeah, that's in so the past awesome. Do you years. think that, like, do you think that you have increased his business? Like, hell yeah. Like, no, the owner used to get mad in the beginning. Uh huh. Uh, he'd be like, get this fucking kid. Cause I literally had a meet up there, like, throwing dildos. <laughs> and the owner was so pissed. But then now it's like, he still is like, this fucking kid. But he lets everything slide yeah. because kids go in there all the time to meet Mr. Ron and they buy something, you know? Yeah, that is Dude, so we, fucking awesome. It's like the same way, like, where, like, the McDonald's is our. 
like version of that yeah. and like the mcdonald's we film at we've had people literally like like the driver will go through like oh someone was just here looking for you guys oh and it's yeah like, that's, like, that's a little terrifying it's so cool. like that's a little scary it is like is so, how it goes someone is, yeah. like, do you think people would like stake out at that convenience store waiting for you does mm-hmm. that happen mm-hmm. that's so cool loki it's life now it's everywhere i yeah. love it though mm-hmm. i love it people are always like do you enjoy people asking you for pictures or coming up to you and, and i'm like i get sad if people don't notice me you know yeah it's like my whole like, life I, I remember I would literally watch videos on the internet of like, like famous people, like people coming up to them. Yeah. And just like imagine that, like Dude. imagine walking down the street and everyone wants to like tell you that you changed their yes, life or something. Bro. So I, I love it. Like, I've never said Dude, no to a picture in my entire we life. We were just in Maui, right in Hawaii, yeah. which you leaked. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. But um, yeah. we were literally in a resort for like five days, walking around, and no one really like noticed us much. And I literally said to Nick at one point, I was like, "Bro, did we like fall off? Like what happened?" Like, <laughs> Like we literally haven't gotten noticed no one. Teen girls. Like I was like sad that we didn't get noticed like one time. I know. But, I love like that shit. So like, I love when people like come up to you and like say something to you. But I really struggle with like understanding the value of myself. Like I I know the position me Matt and Chris are in, and I'm like wow. And I I was confident in us doing YouTube forever, and I knew what we were gonna do, and like. I have the same mindset of like, I am so confident that we're YouTubers. I'm confident in myself. When I hear people come up to me like, oh, you changed my life. You changed this and that. Like you saved my life. Like there was a sign on tour. I remember and it was people like, you saved my life, like holding up a sign. And I'm just like, I laugh a little because I'm just like, I can't take myself that seriously. And it blows my mind. Like I'm See, like, I'm that the is opposite. so I take insane. it so serious. Like I understand it so much. Like I remember what that was like. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. Like, I was that kid, like, you fucking changed my life. Yeah. I always yeah. encourage yeah, Nick to try to see well, cause it. Well, because I, I, I think it. of, like, I don't think, I don't know. It's kind of weird because I feel like growing up, there was never, like, a, a set in stone person that I, like, had watched or, like, really. Yeah, see, like, I was, like, in yeah. their shoes exactly. Yeah. So I just know. Yeah. And there it's was like, never a person for me that I was watching, like, with that devotion. Like, those people are, like, you. And then, like, and then, like, no, for fucking, real. Like, like the Cuff Boys and shit who are, like, I'm also friends with. Yeah. So it's just, like, for me, it's weird because it's, like, now I can be friends with these it's people. It's so cool because yeah, like, awesome like, yeah, like everyone so cool. we looked up to we're friends with now. Besides, like I still have Skies I want to meet. I still have like Cole Ben and I want to meet. Yeah. But, like meeting you today and meeting the Cuff Boys, we're, I'm good now. Like yeah, I met all I the YouTubers awesome. I've watched, which is so fucking cool. It's a cool. good feeling. It's, it's a real so good cool. Feeling. It just is mind blowing. Like that's, but I I'm definitely getting better at it, especially with tour and having it like be real. But like it took it takes me a while to like understand the value of myself. Like wow. The, the coolest thing that I see that you but do. But see, I also understand. Hold on. I'm you're sorry. good. I got you. I also understand. I completely also understand being the idol. Like, I I, I completely feel for the kids that are are too afraid to come up. Or like, oh, for sure. I would I never. Know, like, I would have never. I know like, how they view me because I know, like, bro, even the first time I met Yachty, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I, it's know like, I would is. never go up to someone. Like, I know. Like, I wouldn't take a photo. I wouldn't look at them. I would just like be like, wow, that's crazy that they're right there. And like me personally, like a year ago, I would have never gone up to anybody. Mm-hmm. And been, like, yeah. oh. I was I was saying like, I think the coolest thing that I think you, that I've seen you do is like when fans meet you and stuff like that. And you have that interaction. Like you always ask like their name. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, stuff on yeah that? So it's like. I always do. I always ask like, what, what's their name and like try to like, oh. Because uh, like, it's cool, more than just like uh, whatever. What and then they walk away. It's like you're taking something away. Like, like you're taking, and that's real it's because like, that's cool. Like, I even remember my brief times of meeting, um, people like that. Like I, I met this guy and he and he made sure to be like, "What school do you go to? Yeah, what's your name?" And like that's like, damn. They and it ju- it just fuck. makes people. It's such like a minor thing you can do to make people feel so much more like, like in with you and like connected. And it's just like it just shows. It's it's just so cool. Yeah, no, it's real. I always try to have real conversations. And like, bro, I'll sit there. Like, I remember one time I was in Target and this kid came out to me, um, and we talked about Cobra Kai for like forty five minutes. Like, wow, it was, it's awesome. <laughs> I have some of the best conversations. Yeah, you know, because it's so wholesome too. It's like, yeah, they love you so much that there's never an ulterior ulteriorative motive. Did I say that right? Yeah, ulterior motive. Yeah, there's never like there's never. Like they just love you. Yeah. And they love talking to and you. And the crazy thing is like when a fan's like that and they're so respectful of you, it's like if you had to like if you were running late, you're like, yo, I gotta go, but like I love meeting you, they're not gonna be like, Oh my god, he left our conversation. They're like so they're just like cool. very aware they're that so like cool. you're also a person that's like out and doing things. They're so cool. Dude, what's next, Chris? What is the busiest day in Bale Levine's life look like? Like if you have a really busy day, like start to finish, what does that day look like? Edit days are rough. Edit days are like yeah, business meetings. Or something. Yeah, I kind of like it though because it reminds me that like it's not all just fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think it's good for me, but like you gotta sit there all day, like yeah, the computer. Like after I'm done, my mind is like 
fucked. Mm. Usually I don't even like go eat and stuff because I'm just so locked in. I didn't mean to burp and I'm like, fuck, and I hate <laughs> burps. I never burp. Fuck. Do you have um any like collab soon or like anything or anyone in particular you want in a video or anything like that? Um, I don't know. Well, like I filmed with like everyone I've wanted to film with. There's yeah. definitely still people out there, but like it's a very small select people. You know, I like mm-hmm. real people. I like um genuine people. It's it's select who I film with, but yeah, and I don't know. Not any of that come to mind. You also have like a big tour coming up, and you know, me, Matt, and Nick would love to pop out to a 100%. show. Hundred percent. And it's you like guys you, got to. You're probably gonna have so many other people like come to shows. Do you have anyone that people should be expecting? I know Yachty's probably gonna go to at hopefully, least one. Hopefully, hopefully, right? he came to the last one. Um, he'll he'll probably come to the Atlanta show. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, I ha- I've been talking to different rappers. That's sick. Um, that will probably come to each wherever their whatever city we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other YouTubers, like you know, all the other guys that are doing the mic'd up pranks, will, yep. will come to whatever one they live in. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be. I'm so hyper tour. Yeah, tour is like my 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 show I did in Atlanta was the most fun I've had. Like a- any experience in this YouTube stuff, that was like the most real feeling to like be in a room full of it of of your fans and like even Yachty coming on stage because it came full circle. Me coming on his yep. stage, him coming on mine, and he gave a speech. Wow, um, that's awesome. He gave a speech. And it was just like that was like the craziest moment of my life to like look at all my fans, to look at Yachty, to see my parents like up there like watching me rock a show, my friends. Um, That's so sick. But now we get to do that back to back to back. And it's crazy because tour, because we just got back from our tour not long ago. It's two totally different experiences for you where like you'll have that experience you just talked about of like the shows themselves and meeting so many people and like the tour itself experience, like the show. But then it's also like living on a bus with your friends, going places you've never yeah, it's been gonna before. Be an experience. It's literally it's so two fun. things that you'll experience. I feel like the vlogs are gonna be awesome. Oh my god! Oh my god! They're, they're gonna be so. so fun. Fun. I can't wait to meet the fans. Like like my Atlanta fans meet me all the time. You know, mm-hmm. I'm always doing shit in Atlanta. But like fucking, I've never done something in New Mexico. Half the states <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. You know? So dude, we it's awesome. we went to a New Mexico, uh, Texas Roadhouse, and I think everyone in there's head turned when we walked in really? like it was crazy. actually kind of a little scary that was like crazy. it was wild like that's you'll, crazy it's just so weird like one thing i picked it up puts in of, like, pe- perspective when, yeah like when yeah. you get on that bus and like you're like you could have just left the show there's so many fans around you then you get on the bus you drive somewhere there's a fan where you are and then you get on the bus again and you drive for six hours and you're in a completely different weather you're in a completely different place you're getting used to your surroundings and there's another fan like at another store and it's like oh my god like that's these crazy. people are everywhere and it's like Mind blowing. What's the best advice to give people, and what's the best advice that you've received personally, and what's the best advice that you want to give people? My best advice would be consistency. Consistency in all aspects of life. You know, consistent in videos if you want to do videos. Consistent in loyalty to your friends. Consistency and if you say you're gonna be sober, then you be sober in every aspect. You know, and that's the key to success. Um, best advice I've ever received. Hmm, maybe anybody, like your parents, a friend, someone who did social media before you. Could you like, what's the best advice you got from, like, when you wanted to start YouTube and who, like, was it from, like, a friend, like, pushing you, motivating you? And then, like, do you, like, before YouTube, after YouTube, like, before blowing up and then after blowing up? Um, I don't know. It's weird because I am in a position to where, like, like, there's not many people you go to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's not many people... Because it's, it's a weird position. Like, a lot yeah. of people don't experience, like, like regular life stuff. Like, me, Kyle, and PJ, like, that's my brothers. Like, you know what I mean? We we talk about all that life shit. Like, even, like, especially with when we got our house, it was, like, that right there is, like, one of the moments where you're, like, holy shit. Like, because, like, if you think about it, like, you're, how old are you? 22. You own numerous cars. You have a house. You support all your friends and family. And it's, like, there are people that like literally wait their whole life to just buy a house and own it. And it's like being as young as you are is it must feel so like awarding and like, like how, like you really did exactly what you spoke like into existence. And it's such an awesome, awesome feeling. It is. It's a crazy feeling to this day. I wake up and I'm like, fuck, how is this real? Yeah. I never forget. Like I never forget, um, wanting it all. So yeah. every day I'm very thankful for we it. We always talk about like, how uncomfortable you can be because like the second you get comfortable it kind of like what are you doing comfortability, the is, the, comfortability is the the 
worst thing ever. Yeah, Dude, being we comfortable. We always say like, if for, you're the second you're comfortable, you're lo- like, yeah. If you're trying to be successful and you're comfortable, you're gonna stop working as hard. You're gonna not. I think that's why me and kicked out did so much. That's yeah. literally like me, Matt, me, and Nick will talk we'll, to each we other. Joke like, about how it. uncomfortable or, like, are like me you having today? to go to a new school. Like you know what I mean. All that stuff was just like even like when I went through my breakup, it was like, it was like, bro, everyone's going to college. Like you gotta fucking yeah dial it boss dial the fuck it. up and it's like know? everything that's happening to you is like your life is like in the public view you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like this uncomfort that you're putting yourself into it's like this is how people learn like you learn from oh, your yeah. mistakes like these people are going to see oh, you yeah. problem solve different aspects and I of think your it's life really awesome for kids to see a kid you know go from that to the yeah. houses and yeah the, and the friends like and you like know making I mean? mistakes care of my family. Like anything like, you do it's like people will learn from people will like, I think the best way to learn is, like, learn from your own mistakes, but also being able to, like, allow people into your life that they can also learn from your mistakes mm-hmm. or things that happen to you that, like, it makes it easier for everybody. 100%. You live in, you have a house in Florida and you're from Atlanta. Do you have, like, pros and cons of each place you live at or go to or stay at? Um, I love, I went to Florida because, like I said, the, all the corona stuff and, like, Kyle lives in Florida. Like, it was just fun. Like, house with your friends by the beach. Um, But then quickly I realized... I also like Georgia is so essential because that's where I grew up. You know, that's where yep. CBS is. That's where Mr. Khan is. That's where my family is. That's like Georgia is so home. Um, I quickly realized Georgia is my favorite, but I also love Florida too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So to end it off, what is your message to everyone, the youth and what do you do? What you do for? Um, My message to the youth would be don't listen to anyone. Like literally do what you want to do, you know, follow through what it is that you want in life you know like you can't listen to what someone else wants for you you got to do what you want to do if i listen to other people i would not be here you know and really understand that like there's opinions everywhere right there's constantly people you can't do this oh this is the wrong way to do it like know what you want to do be a good person obviously like you know always do things out of the kindness of your heart find good friends you know and and do good put out good and you will receive good that's my message that's how i got here you know, that's everything to me. And uh, what was the other one? Um, It was what you do, what you do for after your message. Happiness. To 100%. Ha- my, my happiness and other people's happiness. In this, I knew that that was the main reason I did YouTube is because I knew um, I would be so unhappy with life if I never made my dream happen. You know, I knew that's, it, that is what would make me happy. And then I knew also it would make a million, millions of kids happy. Absolutely. I knew um, it made my friends happy. You know, I knew it would make my family happy. Happiness is everything. Happy, happiness is all that matters. At the end of the day, like as cliche as it is, like that's all that matters, you know? So Absolutely. happiness is why I do it 100%. And to impact, to impact is super important to me. The coolest thing ever is when kids come up and say, you know, I, I um, don't care what people think because of you. Or I'm sober because of you. Or I went after... Even something as simple as, like, they wanted to be the best at a sport, even though I suck ass at sports. It's like I put out there that, like, if you want something, you can do it. Like, if I put my mind to being a fucking good-ass basketball player, I would be. You know? So, like, kids come up to me and they say, like, I accomplished this because of your mindset. And that is so important to me. I want to be remembered. I want to impact. I want to, um, you know, I'm here to make people laugh. But I also want to exit as truly helping the youth, you know? That's awesome. It is. It oh, really yeah. is, man. Oh, yeah. Nick and Matt, do you guys have any final remarks? I have no final remarks. Matt? Um, I just think it's a beautiful thing to have you here because, you know, inspiration growing up. Thank you. Like, watching you guys are you, awesome. I think I've, loved, it's just... I've loved watching you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. I just think it's a beautiful thing to everyone wins together. Make sure you're talking in your mic, buddy. I, I know. You're, everyone you're wins together. Yeah. Yep. But together. yeah, Balen. Thank you for coming on the Cut the Camera podcast. Thank it's you, been sir. very fun. Thank you, guys. You know, having you as an inspiration for literally us three starting YouTube, and now you're on our podcast. Everything in life is achievable. Full circle moments happen way more than you think. Anything the mind can imagine, yep. we can obtain. Yep, for real. It's real. I thought that was like a, I thought you were gonna say that was like a Star Wars quote or something. No, I swear. It sounded very it should I just, be. It yeah. should spat that out. But thank you so much for coming on it. We appreciate you. Of course, for being I appreciate here. you guys. You guys are awesome. Wonderful. And hey. thanks for being our first guest too. For oh, real. I'm, I'm honored. That's yeah, first great. guest of the Cut the nice. Camera podcast. Amazing first. Amazing. We started off fucking awesome. Bam. Beautiful. Oh, thank wait, you. We have, we have to actually end our podcast with a final remark. How would if there was a few sentences or like maybe one word? How would you describe your life when the when the camera is cut? The same shit you see on camera. Boom. Exactly. It literally cuts and then I'm connecting the speakers and 
<laughs> pranking people. Watching Star Wars. <laughs> All right, drinking man. lemonade. Thank you so you guys, much. See everyone next week. Thanks for listening or watching Cut the Camera Podcast, and we'll be Bye. back. Toodles.